Uh, greetings. This video is going to cover notes for unit four, which is going to be basically about competition and market structure. Specifically, 4.1 will be pure competition, 4.2 will be monopoly, 4.3 will be monopolistic competition, and 4.4 government regulations and competition. Okay, so it's basically um, what's happening when the market's competing. Okay, so let's go ahead and make our copy of this and set up our screens. And I'll walk you through this so you have enough time to do it yourself. Uh, not new, make a copy. All right, let's do that. I like to get rid of the words copy of because that's sloppy. Hopefully you see what I just did there and you're doing the same yourself. If need be, pause and then keep going. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and leave mine open, but I would suggest you close out your original so you don't try to top in there, type in there and get stuck. All right, let's go. Okay. October 19th, that's the day we'll be doing this. And let's put a six for it. Why not? All right. So what do I have to do to start? I have to open up the slideshow if you ever want to. The slideshow for the first one is linked here. The slideshow for the second part is linked here. Uh, by the time you get a version of this document, this video will be live. I'll put the link to this one that I'm creating right now. It'll be right here. So if you ever want to watch it, you want to pause it. It wouldn't be bad to watch these to study. Um, and if you're not listening to it and you're just filling in blanks, you're not really going to learn much. So it's kind of a waste of your time. I would say, let's go ahead and make that, pull that apart. Give it a sec because sometimes things get a little wonky. And I would go ahead and pull the second one. See how I already opened those? That was a bit of a cheat. But it wasn't a huge cheat, so I don't feel too bad. Um, let's go ahead and shrink that a little bit. I think it would be good to have these on the same tab so here I'm doing that and that's not the one I want I want the next one so let's make sure you have the one with your name open I have too many tabs as you guys uh, always know <laughs> but it's okay I don't think it slows down my performance much because I'm usually only on these ones and actually word docs and slideshows they don't take up a ton of memory so even if it was a little too much it still shouldn't be too bad uh, let's shrink this down some more, make more room for the space. I think right there is good. Because I want to see the slideshow as much as I can without toggling back and forth too much. And go ahead and say goodbye to me. I'm going to shrink. Oh, I'm doing this over our fall break. So we're at Casa Smith in the pool area. I had a real good day in the stock market yesterday. Um, yeah. Moderna. Thank you, Moderna, for making me all kinds of money. That was my contrarian play. Sometimes you have to go against the advice um, that they give you. Uh, yeah. Even though people were against Moderna, I said, no, Moderna's strong. Um, actually going to go in on Moderna. Uh, yeah. So just because something takes a tip one day doesn't mean if the real value is there, there isn't value in the market for that product. So you got to use your own kind of economic forecasting. Anyway, uh, let's get to pure competition. And let's shrink this a little. Let's do like that. You want it just so when we're working. That's pretty good. Okay. So the big question here for um, the first section is, what are the four types of market structures? What are the characteristics of the four types of these market structures? Um, so the four different types and then the characteristics. There's some sound going on in the background. So if you hear my head turning, um, we're getting our closets done over the break here. I'm sure it'll come out nice, but right now it's kind of inconvenient. But luckily I have this nice patio I can hide on. All right, let's look forward. There are four types of market structures. 
perfect competition, monopolistic competition, oligopoly, and monopoly. In perfect competition, you have as many people competing as you want. Um, and there it's, you have a lot of freedom. Well, that looks terrible. How are you supposed to see that? I can't see that. So let's do this. Let's make the background. Let's do this little white shape. A to D in, in order of least restrictive to most restrictive. Uh, oligopoly, you have only a few companies competing in the marketplace, like, I don't know, cable. A monopoly is only when there's one, and there's only one, like pg e there's no competition. Uh, oligopoly might be, I don't know, phone or RV makers, I don't know, something that's unusual. Uh, monopolistic competition, uh, let's hold off on defining each one. But let's make sure we've done our note. So, in order of least restrictive to most restrictive. All right, fair enough. Next one. Um, characteristics of market structure. Well, when you have Perfect competition, sometimes it's also called pure competition because there's nothing in the way of that competition. You have many buyers and sellers. Um, there'll be identical products and the buyers and sellers are well-informed. Consider this like Amazon, um, things that are common. I don't know, like cups maybe or clothes. There's just a lot on the market. Uh, there's really no barriers to enter the market such as startup costs. Uh, but generally, there's going to be some startup costs. The uh, market equilibrium is the goal. All right, so let's go ahead and write it on in. Everyone's well informed. They know about the product. Information is easy, easy to find. Um, there's not a lot keeping you from joining the market either, which is good for trade. Uh, goal is market equilibrium. So gasoline, anyone that can buy and sell gasoline, all kinds of gas stations, notebook paper, milk. If you can make the product, you can get in it. that pretty good. So this is when there's lots of competition, say between twins, say between uh, people fighting. Uh, so yeah, that's what those visuals are. Let's go to the next one, monopolistic competition. What is that? This time, you still have many firms. And there's differentiation of the goods. People really believe there's a difference in things like fast food, car companies. All right. Some people might be loyal to McDonald's, some Jack in the Box, some Carl Jr. Wendy's. Or you might have... Um, you know, I know definitely some people love Chevy, some people love Ford or whatever. Uh, and there's slight control over the prices, not total control because there's enough on the market. Um, but because they've built up brand loyalty, they, they'll know they have some um, control. There's few artificial barriers enter the market, so nothing slows you down too much. Now, hotels are another good example. I think this is again hard to see. So the black part, I'm gonna go ahead and highlight it and then make it gray this time. Oh, I don't know that that's good enough either. But that's not doing much for me, is it? Maybe I should just change the ink. Oh, there we go. Let's try that. Let's go ahead and take a look at the other the companies we're talking about in this kind of situation. Yeah, see all these hotel companies? Fairfield Inn, Marriott, Best Western, 
Motel 6, whatever. They have all these restaurant options, franchises. All right, let's go to the next one. Oligopoly. The Oli means few. Whenever you have an oligopoly, you have rule by the few. Uh, this happened at the end of the French Revolution. <coughs> Under the directory, you had like, I think it was like five people, and then you went to the council. I think it was like three at the end. And then Napoleon kind of took over as the first council. Uh, when there's a few large profitable firms, it tends to be an oligopoly. Um, and it could be different in the whole market versus one country's market. So we might have had domination by a few globally in the auto industry, but maybe in a particular country, a few have a lead. There's some variety of goods, but not a huge variety of goods. There's a high barrier to enter the market. Difficult to get in there. Um, take the airlines. You have to prove that you're reliable. Some controls over price concern the government. Like they'll be concerned if there's a price monopoly in the railroad industry that it could be lead to unfair pricing. And so you might get more regulation on price than you normally would. Farmers really got upset with the price of railroads because it really affected their ability to profit. And they really got high prices. Um, and there tends to be price leadership, but not uh, by just one. There's enough competition to keep it from becoming out of control. But you can get collusion. But the companies will work together to drive prices up. Uh, but that's generally illegal here. Um, though cartels will find, will form, and it is a form of collusion. They're literally agreeing to control prices. OPEC is a prime example. They can try, try to control the price of oil. But OPEC invariably fails because there's usually one member nation that will start charging more you think think oligopoly coke and pepsi nominate soda market they actually each control a diet product uh, a lemon lime product so yeah uh film industry it's another one there's only a few film companies um, like dreamworks is a subsidiary uh, but you got mgm warner brothers columbia 20th century fox miramount paramount i don't know what the other one summit okay <coughs> but there's not a million there's a limit it's like there's not a million airlines flying to houston on a tuesday there's only a couple and that's why it's by the few few will control the industry see so yeah, that toyota honda they're in our car industry here uh and they control 70 to 80 percent of the outfit uh three to five to seven usually it's under 10 though when you're talking oligopoly or not much more than that So you get the joke. Not everyone hates high oil, oil prices because, you know, they sell oil. High prices are good for them. Russia, Norway, Mexico, still oil exporters. But invariably, one of these one of these countries produces more than they say they're going to produce. They're trying to make, squeeze out just a little more profit. And because of that, the price of the oil goes down until... Um, some situations you got a monopoly where one firm just dominates the market. Uh, when I first moved out here, you could only get, if you wanted Pac-12 channel, you have to get Comcast. No other company will offer it. Uh, almost every computer today uses some form of Windows uh, or Vista, which is a Microsoft product. Even the Apples now use that. Um, so there's no getting away from paying Bill Gates his donation if you want to have a computer or an operating system that works. Monopoly is when you got one firm in charge. All right, let's exit this. And go back to our notes. No variety of goods. You get one thing or you get one thing. There's complete barrier to enter the market because one company dominates. Many leads to complete control over prices. This is why Amazon lowballed the book industry 
so they can get complete control over prices. Uh, I know you can still get books, but there's not much competition in books anymore due to Amazon's uh, really creating monopoly there. Uh, and that's why some people that look at the economy are concerned. All right, types of monopolies. You have natural monopolies. These are markets that are run best by one firm, like the post office, like uh, transportation for school, school buses. Then you got government monopolies, and it's for basically public needs, PG&E, water and power, that kind of thing. Or uh, Caltrans, which controls the roads and bridges in, in California. Then you get technological monopolies. That's your Microsoft. And you tend to have exclusive patent rights of the creation, or like Apple with their watches and phones. Then you got industrial organizations that tend to not, that are, tend to have natural monopolies. Um, Major League Baseball, NFL, tend to not have too much competition. Though NFL's got some. Uh, I'm not sure why baseball should be accepted from these roles, but baseball is accepted from these roles. Uh, I don't know if it'll be like that forever. All right, let's look at the cartoon. Even he heaven is helpless to stop Bill Gates because uh, he's got a monopoly. And basically, let's say he's going to control heaven and he's going to have a big house there. Uh, just like Microsoft, it's impossible to stop. So is Bill Gates. All right, so that's a joke about monopoly. All right, I think you find it. Hopefully, you find it amusing. Let's see. Remember, whenever you're doing these questions, you have to answer in a complete sentence. If you just write down what I do, you're going to get it wrong. That doesn't mean it wouldn't help to write down what I did. You know what I'm automatically doing? I'm putting some words in the question into the answer so I can make a sentence. Four types of market structure are pure or pure Perfect competition, monopolistic competition, oligopoly, monopoly. That's your sentence. If you don't finish that, I'm going to give you zero. You have to listen to me. That's what a lot of you are losing. You're copying my words on that I'm typing, but you're not thinking enough to hear and do what I'm saying either. Don't miss it. Characteristics of the four market structures are. Many buyers and sellers, no barriers to entry, uh, monopolistic, So many firms, some differentiation of goods and what is it? Some and few barriers to market. Oligopoly. That's when you need that. Few firms. Some barriers. 
to enter market. Let's see what else. High barriers. Some price control. Three characteristics is good. Let's do another semicolon. That's how you make a list into a sentence. Monopoly, one, firm, no, very high barriers to enter market. Total price control. Let's look to see if we missed anything important. Complete barrier to enter market. So complete control over prices. One firm dominates. Complete. happy now we got many buyers no barriers to entry and no price controls Monopolist, many firms some different and few barriers to enter market well got few firms high barriers to and some price control and monopoly one firm dominates complete to enter market Total price control. Again, if you didn't have oligopoly and monopoly on question one, that would be incorrect. Okay, that should do it for the first chunk. Let's go to the next topic, government regulation. And um, Competition and market structure. I guess it can all just stay on this one. So let's just do that. I'm going to get rid of this one. And I'm going to unlink this one. Actually, I'll leave it. But I'm not going to change that one. Uh, yeah, we'll see. All right. What dangers of allowing monopolies to operate unchecked? Well, it's bad for the market. Bad for the consumer. Because prices are going to be higher. What major legislation has been passed to control monopolies? I think there's two that I can think of off the top of my head. Sherman Antitrust Act and uh, I think the Clayton Act. What's the other one? Uh, yeah. Uh, monopoly. It's from a Greek word, monos meaning alone, and polling in Excel meaning one seller in the market. Um, governments and consumers have decided that this is bad for the market, even though firms would like as much and as close to monopoly as possible to maximize profit. It's bad for the economy. Uh, those are Greek words. That's why you see, I believe that is Aristotle and Plato. And I believe Plato's the older one and Aristotle's the younger. That's in the School of Athens by Raphael. He's a very uh, famous Renaissance painter. All right. <coughs> All right, the dangers of monopoly. It's against American ideals of fairness. You want just competition in the marketplace, so you feel like you're getting a reasonable deal. It stops competition. And uh, market economics only works if you have true competition. So Adam Smith's notions of laissez-faire and the government staying out rely on there being healthy competition. If monopolies are unregulated, they're going to choose to keep prices very high, which could slow and or inhibit the economy. Um, and then you get these economies of scale where you have uh, super high startup costs, which really keep businesses from growing. It really chokes up the market. 
um, if the average cost drops as production rises, because um, it's just going to be more and more expensive to make anything. So as you can see, monopolies are problematic. Uh, and you're not using your resources as wisely as you could. Use of scarce resources goes unchecked. So you're, you're getting a lot of waste because of monopoly. Uh, multiple firms in the market help prevent waste because you're in competition, because you're not in a monopoly. No competition stimulate new technology or innovation. So it's hard to get growth and it's hard to get be competitive globally because eventually someone's going to figure out a way to compete and they don't really figure out a new way to do business. Uh, here's what a monopolistic firm would say. We don't have to offer the latest advances. They have no other options but to buy our product. But luckily, there are satellite companies to challenge um, companies like Comcast now. So then Comcast has to improve its programming and its tech because you have other vendors such as, oh, I don't know, what is it, DirecTV or it's another satellite one. Uh, what do we have here? A visual showing you how monopolies would see it, but they could control the whole thing. I'm not sure what this one on the upper right is, except for it looks like some kind of mountain. Oh, so we don't want to risk scarce resources like lumber or water. Uh, but then it leads to a lot of political power. When you get heavy contribution to political campaigns for special considerations, uh, there's a lot of monopolistic money going to prevent change. Like the pharmaceutical companies, they don't want to be regulated. It's one reason why we had um, the opioid crisis, because uh, no one was stopping it, because the pharmaceuticals kept giving money to the politicians to keep things the way they were. Uh, despite the fact that people left and right were getting addicted to things like Oxycontin uh, and so and Vicodin. So it's ridiculous, but it, it happened. And now you got all this drug abuse that that really was government aided and corporate profits were really behind it. Status quo is a Latin phrase. I think it's Latin. Uh, and I think I know it means keep things as they are. There's a real system, the penchant in the system try to avoid change, um, whether it's Obama or McCain in charge there. Uh, this is former Governor Rod Blagojevich. Sorry if I butchered his pronunciation. He was the former governor of Illinois, uh, and basically there was an open Senate seat, and he was taking contributions to try to get uh, give the seat away, and uh, that's pretty much not good, because you know, that would be an end run around democracy. It shouldn't be about money. It should be about who's going to represent the people best. Anyway, uh, these special considerations can be costly to the democratic process. All right. So we have political tampering to maintain status quo. Status quo means keep things as they are. By uh, this incident with uh, but Djokovic was pretty embarrassing. I remember when it happened. I can't believe I can't remember how to say his name right. Um, maybe that's right. Uh, anyway, let's go to the next idea. In the U.S., we've taken great efforts to try to stop monopolies. Uh, where is it happening? A um, few laws were passed. And it took a while. At first, we kind of just let monopolies go, especially in the late 1800s. Uh, but as time went on, especially after the Great Depression, we said, well, we really need to crack back on these things. But also with Teddy Roosevelt at the beginning of the 20th century as well. Uh, large companies try to buy out competitors. It's easier to buy out the competition than to run them out of business. It's faster. Uh, and government will take steps to level the playing field saying, no, you cannot do that. No, you can't do that. And that's why you see guys like, Face Zuckerberg from Facebook or Bill Gates getting pulled in front of Congress because congressmen are saying, you're a monopoly. And they say, we're not a monopoly. And it goes on and on. Uh, 
uh, because, you know, like we've said, it's not boys or bad business. One sees is finished unless government, good government retakes the ship. So what are we calling the monopolist, the trust, in this visual? Pirates. What are they going to kill? Who are they making walk the plank? Uncle Sam. That's right. Good. This is saying, don't let monopolies go because we'll kill America. This is calling Standard Oil an octopus because they want to control everything. And like an octopus, once they get the tentacles on something, they're never going to give it up. Uh, but trust busting became a thing after this very famous leader comes to power in New York and then in America, Teddy Roosevelt. And uh, people liked it because someone was standing up to the rich people. This was difficult because the rich people had also had a lot of power. That's what comes with money. Uh, one of the first laws passed to try to stop monopolies is the Sherman Antitrust Act. Uh, it was trying to break up Standard Oil as well as American tobacco. Uh, Standard Oil, it worked. Uh, American tobacco, it eventually works, but it takes a little longer there. Um, the Clayton Act, the seller Kefauver Act, further break up mo monopolies. Uh, Standard Oil isn't what it used to be. Um, Um, and so part of those laws allow the government to try to block attempted mergers that they think would be too harsh with competition. A merger is when two or more companies combine. Uh, and if they're really big companies, the FTC will look at it and say, well, is that going to be too monopolistic or not? Go ahead and just write an FTC. That's the abbreviation for Federal Trade Commission as well as the Department of Justice. The Department of Justice, they're the ones that sue on behalf of the people to enforce things like they, the Sherman Antitrust Act or the Clayton Act. Some mergers may be beneficial for business and beneficial for society. Time Warner, um, FC buying Frito-Lay, these things happen. Um, because Time Warner now includes HBO, CNN, Turner, Warner Brothers, New Line Cinema. So it's a huge media company. Comcast owns NBC, Telemundo, and it's a cable powerhouse. Well, they were talking about merging, and people were concerned because uh, it could cause prices to go up. It could cause uh, lack of competition, lack of good products. But now as we've seen media proliferate into different spheres online, I think there is a less of concern from that because there's now a glut in the market and there's concern that the market was getting tamped down because of competition. All right. See, basically they're calling Time Warner fat cats that uh, tried to unite. Uh, but I think they got stopped because it pretty much is a merger. See the joke? Uh, who's crying? The customers are. Because what would happen to all that media? It would go way up in price. So, uh, I don't, but did the Time Warner merger work? I'll let you figure that out on your own. But what do you think? Think it worked? Is there a thing called Time Warner? Yes. Now it's only behind Comcast. So, anyway, there was a move for deregulation. The problem is when you deregulate, you're going to make the possibility of monopolies increase. Uh, the government tried to reduce earlier regulations imposed on some industries. Uh, but remember, the railroads were charging... Uh, farmers too much, but they tried to re, um, also deregulate the airline industry. This was disastrous in some way because you started getting drugged up pilots, drugged up uh, who's the people that bring in the people they call them in uh, the runway, I don't know, the dispatcher, the air traffic controllers. They deregulated that in the 80s and a bunch of those people were 
they stopped doing drug tests. Turns out they were on drugs. They started crashing some planes. And eventually the government stepped in again to reimpose regulation there. Thank God, because people were dying because those people were not being regulated. Um, I'm sure it is stressful, but better to be stressful than for people to die. At least that's what I think. I don't want people dying. Regulation is not all bad. Making someone drive somewhat decently before you get them a license. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, the goal of deregulation, you're trying to make the markets more competitive so you have better pricing. Deregulation allowed really to open the door for, you know, the cell phone, energy regulation. But in a lot of industries, like the natural gas fracking thing got out of hand. And, uh, you know, you got people that can light their water on fire because it was hard to stop the fracking once it was done. Mm -hmm. What dangers? Okay. Let's just restate. The dangers of allowing monopolies to operate in checks are a lack of choice in products and rising prices. Stops competition, high prices, no competition, no come. You're not going to have many different products. Oh, that's fine. What major major legislation has been passed to control? Legislation is law. You can rephrase, so I will. Major laws pass to control monopolies are the Sherman Antitrust Act and the Clayton Act. The Sherman Antitrust Act and the Clayton Act. Those two will do. You could have added a couple more, you could have added other things. That'll do it for this lecture and this series of notes. I hope you found this lecture and video helpful. Peace, peace, peace.